every year, right after Thanksgiving, I pull three books off my bookshelf, and I've been doing this for years, and I reread them every year. And one of the things about rereading a book every, every year is, is that each year, there's a little bit different take that I get on the book. Well, the three books are The Thanksgiving Visitor in a Christmas Memory by Truman Capote and Dylan Thomas's A Child's Christmas in Wales. Each of those books has a special relationship in the family that I find intriguing. The very first one, a Chris, no, the Thanksgiving visitor, Truman Capote is in school and he's being constantly bullied by this one boy. Now, if you know the history of Truman Capote, he was different and the kid knew that and constantly, constantly beat him up to the point where he did not want to go to school. But he had a special friend in the home. I believe she was his cousin. She was in those days what we would call a simple lady. She very much stayed at home. She was not a social butterfly, but she understood human nature. And it was coming Thanksgiving and Truman was getting really, really upset because he was being constantly bullied. But the, the cousin knew about this bully in his background. He came from a large, poor family who lived in the holler. They were extremely poor, and his father was abusive. And the, the aunt saw, the cousin saw something in that boy that Truman could not see. And she said, you're going to invite him to Thanksgiving dinner. And he said, oh my. Not only is it, I have to be in the same house with him, well, the young boy gets invited. And it's very interesting to see the dynamic that's going on in the home as, as the, the bully arrives. Of course, the cousin is out in the kitchen cooking because she doesn't count, so she's not part of the social group in the living room. And then you have the, the rest of the women in the kitchen helping her, the men sitting in the, in the living room, you know, boasting about what great people they are, and the three maiden ladies who nobody wants around. Let's talk about family dynamics that are going on. And of course, in the course of the evening, there's a crisis, in the, and the bully ends up leaving the home very quickly. And Truman runs off because he's angry that this boy was invited, and he said, I knew we should never have invited him. And the cousin finds him in the barn and explains to him what was really going on. And when you look back upon it, Truman Capote understood later on in life that the cousin was really a very wise woman because she knew human nature. She knew there was something good in that bully that Truman could not see at that age. And of course, the next section is the uh, um, Christmas memory, where that same cousin bakes fruit, fruit uh, cakes and sends them all over the place to everybody in the town and to President Roosevelt, and she gets a thank you note every year. But being poor, she has to scrape all the money she can together and really save her coins and everything else that she can until she can go and buy the food, the, 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 the ingredients necessary. The part of the ingredients is the whiskey that goes on it. So she has to go to the moonshiner to find, get the whiskey. And the moonshiner finds that what, what it's all about, and he says, okay, you can have the whiskey for nothing as long as I get the fruitcake. And of course, how she reaches out to the various members of the community, again, in her own quiet way, she knew that she had a place in life. She wasn't part of the family because she was slow, and she knew that Truman was being picked on because he was different, but she understood that the innate goodness of people is in how we treat each other as a society. And of course, a child's Christmas in Wales, it's a real hoot when it starts out because 
you know, the Prosperos have a fire, it's Christmas Eve and the Prosperos have a fire in their home and the, the fire brigade comes, puts out the fire and the place is a mess and the, 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 again, the slow relative comes downstairs and says to the fireman, can I give you something to read? And then the whole family gathers together. Again, you have the scenario where the, you know, the women are doing the work, the women, men are sitting in the, in the living room enjoying life, and you have the, the, um, the, the cousin who, because it's Christmas, drinks a little bit too much and gets tipsy. And there's chaos going on. And there's all kinds of stuff going on. If you read the story, there's a, it's a really fascinating dynamic of family. And sometimes it's when, when we gather together as to, to celebrate the Feast of the Holy Family, sometimes we have a, uh, um, a kind of a poly, I'll say poly, uh, a, a false image of what the Holy Family was really like. If you look at Mary and Joseph, you know, Jesus was born in a crib, in a stable. They had no money. They had nothing. They were rejected by society. And then they had to flee to Egypt where they were aliens and nobody liked them. Nobody wanted them there. And then when they finally came back, you know, they, they formed a life and then Jesus, of course, gets lost in the temple. And then probably Joseph dies sometimes after leaving Mary as a single mother, a widow. So you think sometimes we have this idealistic idea of the Holy Family. And they were ideal in that they were followers of faith. They were faith-filled people. Today's Gospel speaks about Mary and Joseph bringing Jesus to the temple to perform the purification rites that all Jewish people do with their male sons. And we realize from that that Mary and Joseph taught Jesus the Torah. They raised him as a good Jewish boy, and they lived as good Jewish people. So, as we look at it, sometimes we have to put aside the idealism of the Holy Family and say they lived a real life, not unlike many people here who have had disasters, who have the, those issues in the family where, where people are not accepted, where we have issues where people have a problem or an addiction that nobody looks at. We have people, we have family members who are different. And what they do, if you look at the three books, three stories, each of them talks about the chaos of family. But each of them, in one way or another, Bill and Thomas and Truman Capote kind of get a sense of, yes, families are complicated. But there's always hope when you have someone who can see beyond the moment and see the possibilities. As we celebrate the Feast of the Holy Family, look at the possibilities that Jesus brought by his presence among us. New life, new hope, you know, new, new, new possibilities. And as bad as sometimes families can be, there is hope, there is possibilities. No, I can't wait till next year. The other one I read sometimes when we could, as I'd go to the, to the school and read to the kindergarten kids, Uncle Mugsley and the Terrible Twins of Christmas. It's total chaos, but it reminds me of my family on Christmas Day, when everything is up for grabs when I was growing up. 